the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studio. This is The Ramsey Show. We're here to help you, America, win in your life, specifically your money, and then we look at your work and relationships as they tie into that all-important issue of money. We're here to help. The phone number is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. And with me this hour is my colleague, none other than the incomparable, uh, delightful Rachel Cruz. Wow. Yeah. I thought so I'd add a adjectives. little extra. Thank you. I gave you two. Feels great. I, I, <laughs> Instead of colleague, I was counting. I, was I like, thought, yes. well, I'll give you two there yes. to get us started today. So appreciate that. Good to see it's you. It's going to be a good show. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're here for you guys. Let's start it off with Lauren, who waits in Richmond, Virginia. Stacy and I lived in Richmond for a while when I worked for the governor of Virginia. I great like to city. point out these useless facts. You as always we, do with every city. I think it's the old man in me. I, it's it unfortunate. Is, there's a lot. I'll try not there's to do it there. today. No. Every call. Every call. I'm going to expect it. <laughs> Every call. We'll do a city reference. <laughs> Lauren is up. Lauren, how can we help? Hey, guys. Uh, fun to know that you used to live in Richmond. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you. So my boyfriend and I are currently planning out a potential feature together. So we've been going through FPU and during that process, um, and actually before that process, he shared that in a previous relationship, he co-signed on a student loan with his girlfriend. Mm. So, Ooh. Um, <laughs> so looking at that, we're trying to figure out, do we pay that off? Is there any way to, like, what do we do with that? Because she never finished the degree, and so it's not likely that she's going to pay it off anytime soon. Um, yeah. Wow. I don't think I've ever heard this one, Rachel. This is, how long ago was the uh, relationship? Um, it ended probably two years ago, and it was three years long. Oh, boy. Man. Yikes. Well, is the girlfriend... Ex. Like, oh, gosh, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Sorry, Lauren. It's okay. Ex-girlfriend. Yeah. Is she <laughs> is she behind on on payments? Is she... Like, no. where is she... Is she... She's, she's paying the minimum payments, but it's just going to take forever. Well, right now, it's in forbearance. So before she was paying the minimum payment. Yes. Right okay. now, it's on like hold and all that. Right. But is she, do you know if she's planning on at all being aggressive towards this debt? No idea. There's no contact. Did the, did the, <laughs> okay. oh, did the relationship end uh, peacefully? You know, <laughs> it wasn't tumultuous. It just kind of stopped. So I just wonder, yeah, is she going to try to stick it to him because he co-signed for it? Yeah, because the only the only reason as a co-signer are you kind of screwed is if they stop right, right payments mm-hmm. and all of that. But if she continues to pay and it's just, I mean, it would suck that she, you know, if she has it for the next seven years, he's for seven years, he'll yeah. be kind of watching his back being like, oh, gosh, you're not going to pay. She going to pay. But if, you know, but I, but yeah. you guys are only, or he, sorry, your yeah. boyfriend is only on the hook when, when or if something goes awry. Do you know what I mean? Then, yeah. then he would be. How so, much is it? Um, 20000 And what we're looking at is, okay, so let's say we get married, we move together, all that. A year from now, we go to buy a house and we've paid off everything but that student loan. Is that like negatively affect our credit score? Like, should we just pay it off to get rid of it? Like, what does that all of it? Well, most of it is in me? her name, yeah. 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 Um, but again, ugh, I would want to know what she. That's the thing that sucks about co-signing is I'm like your future is tied to this other mm-hmm. person, right? For yeah. until until it's until it's paid off and student loans. I mean, they're not bankruptable. I mean, like this is a thing that's going to have to happen. So. Um, Man, I would hate for him to be the one. She could look if you guys had contact with her to refinance. Sometimes when you refinance, you can get, you know, um, get a cosigner off of the loan. Student loans, I'm ugh, are they federal or private? Federal. Federal, okay. I would look into that, Lauren, and see and and it would be worth a conversation to reaching back out to her, even though it's probably very it's very awkward. <laughs> um, but to see if she would consider refinancing to get his name off of it because of his plans moving forward. Um, yeah. But if uh, not, I would hate for you guys to be the ones to yeah. go and pay something that's yeah. not yours. And if she's not late on them, right, like it's yeah. not going to penalize him um, necessarily. But if she is late and she doesn't pay them, then that's the that's the stupid tax that you pay as a cosigner, yeah. unfortunately. And I, and, I, and I also hate to take us where we got to go here, Lauren, but you said we multiple times. Do we need to pay this off? And there's no we. Unfortunately, this I is know he. I not. 
Okay, so <laughs> not you, yet. Uh, well, I get We're it. Very close to like engagement, marriage. All very of that, like, exciting. Six months. Okay, yeah. very exciting. But until, until then, then, nothing. Until then, yeah. this is his problem. Yes. And I hate it for him, but I, I agree with Rachel. Um, I, I would be reaching out with with the, the olive branch, you know, the <laughs> metaphor to say, hey. So can I get my name off this? <laughs> can I? Would you work with me on this? Can we look because to see if we can refi- yeah. you don't want to be with me. Yeah. I'm okay with that. You know, I would try to ne- to negotiate that on good faith to say, hey, help me out, do me a solid. I tried to help you out. That yeah. was that was not so yeah. smart. That's right. Um, but again, it it would take her. She's got to play ball. She's and 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 if she doesn't, it's like pff, that's it. I mean, but man, we get this call with. Cars, houses. You know, this is a new trend, by the way. I haven't asked you what you think of this. The new trend is, and I'm sure you know of this, but a lot of single people that may just be friends, they're not even romantically connected. Well, they're trying, they're buying houses together. Together with both names, trying to get equity and all that. Oh, no. Because they can't afford to buy a house yeah. on their own. So they're going, okay, I'm really good friends with my buddy, Bob. Yeah. And so Bob and Larry are going to buy a house together. And it's like, that can't end well. No. But this no, is a thing that's both happening. both names on the deed and the mortgage, all of it. Yeah, no, no. Don't do that. I know, because in the moment, it feels like a really smart financial move. Well, that I'm why reading, don't I? Yeah. yeah, what if a three or four go together? They all go, well, wait a second. I can put my down payment in, you put yours in, and four of us oh, become roommates, one house. Yep. And then, and not just roommates, but owning Owners. part ownership You're right. within it. But they think, oh, it's a smart roommate play, oh, and we yeah. all get a little bit of equity, and, and it's going to be and great. Then, and then Bob goes off doing Bob's thing, and you're like, <laughs> right? Bob? Bob goes and meets Luann, Crap. and now Larry's <laughs> screwed. What am I going to do, Bob? Why are all these people 80 years old? I think it's funnier because <laughs> if I said Eric, it's not funny. But if I say Bob meets Luann, that's funny. But if it's Eric. And Meredith, it's not yeah. funny. That's why I go with the older names. But there really is something yeah, here. Don't we're ha- do that. We're having fun with this, but this gets really no. contentious. Now, what you can do, we've heard people do this, is they go and they buy, um, you know, a starter townhome or condo. They get two roommates, not on the mortgage, not yes. ownership. That's the and play. And they help pay the the mortgage and all that, you know. That's smart. Sure, that's a that's a play yeah. to. And you're to offering go. them a discount. But with when it comes to ownership, yeah, I mean any level of sharing until unless you're married, and there's a legal binding contract there. Uh, other than that, not smart to. Uh, not smart. Co-sign. Don't put your name on people's debt. Don't go yeah. in together thinking you're gonna get a better deal with. Yeah. Equity in the house and all that, because Bob and Luann, man, they are trouble. They're going to go do their thing, and poor Larry loses his pal. <laughs> and he like... may lose a lot of his money. Don't do it, Bob. Not worth it. Larry, <laughs> be pals. You know, play golf. Whatever it is you do, don't co-sign on a mortgage and all that stuff. It just never works out. There you go. And Luann is the bad girl in all of them, <laughs> because she won poor Bob's Luanne. heart. How did this all go so bad? Because... You didn't buy it the right way for yourself. So there it is. All right, folks, more crazy analogies, funny names, and your calls. Coming up, this is The Ramsey Show. Buying a home is one of the biggest decisions of your life. You need a partner like Churchill Mortgage. Churchill is one of the highest rated lenders in the country and they're Ramsey trusted because they do what's right for you. Churchill works with you to build a mortgage the Ramsey way. One that doesn't bust your budget, sets you up for financial success and helps you get out of debt faster. Go to churchillmortgage.com today and get started. America. Thrilled to have you here on The Ramsey Show as we take your questions about your money and your work and relationships. We want to help you break through and get where you want to go financially. And many times that uh, has a work component to it. In fact, uh, Rachel Cruz, who's my uh, co-host this hour, I mean, Dave has said for decades, your greatest 
wealth building tool is in fact your income. Yes. And we believe that he's right about that. And and we live in a, in a world right now, in an economy where if you need to make more money to get through the baby steps, uh, whatever baby step you're on, or you're just not really happy where you are and you want to do that thing, um, it's never been better. Unemployment is low. Uh, the gig economy is roaring. Uh, and, and, and I want people the to understand economy? the gig economy. You've never heard that? Mm-mm. Yeah. I, oh, I get to teach you a term. So the gig economy is, um, I have a full-time job or, uh, oh, a side, and a gig. side gig. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. I and hear you. And so it's like, so because it's so easy now. The I was pand- like gigabyte? No. Side gig? <laughs> uh, Uber, like, Uber Eats. Yeah, or for like, sure. The I side can, hustle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They yes. just call it the gig economy. Everybody's got a phrase, right? That's good. Yeah, it's Thanks. kind of fun. Now I feel like I'm in yeah. the inn. So as you know, I'm deeply passionate about helping people make more money yep. and actually enjoy doing it so they can get through these baby steps that we talk about. And so uh, I'm going out on the road, Rachel. No backup singers. We all travel together for building wealth. I we do know. smart covers. It's the Ken Coleman. It is the Ken the Coleman night, show. The night to shine. It's going to be this. fun. And so this is for anybody, Rachel, who feels stuck. It could be a variety of reasons. Toxic workplace. Uh, I feel like I've hit my lid. There's not much growth opportunity there where I am. I want to launch a side business. I don't know what the idea is, or I know what it is. I don't know how. And I'm going to teach uh, on a formula That'll always give you a breakthrough when you're dealing with some fear and doubt and uncertainty. And so I'll be speaking on that formula and then doing the thing that I love most is getting out in the crowd. We're Which you're do... so good at. Thank you. You really are. That you and Deloney before we do our little some thing. Yes. It's fun. And George and I do it when we're on the road oh, together yeah, yeah, and you yeah, guys yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh and just that just the energy and the engagement. That's what's fun about these kind it's of fun. events. And I'm glad you're putting this in yeah. it because you know, it's one thing to sit in a seat and to watch something and take it all in, which is what we usually do at Ramsey events because we want to, you know, uh, give you instruction and inspiration, all of it. But when you can add that element of being with the pe- with people when yes. you're just down there, I'm like, there's a level of energy to that type of event that is so great. And the yeah. content that comes out of it. It's real. In the moment. Yeah. These real life stories, real life people talking about what's going on. And so, yeah, you're a master at kind of pulling well, all of you. that out. And engaging in that way. So these events are going to be so fun. I'm They're going to so be a lot of fun, you. and it could be a great gift for somebody. We have multiple opportunities. We have a VIP opportunity to spend time before the event going even deeper. We're going to take questions live from the crowd. It's great energy. Here are the dates. April 20, coming up in Kansas City, Chicago, Illinois, May 16th, Atlanta, Georgia, May 18th, Dallas, Texas, May 23rd. You can get your tickets right now at RamseySolutions.com slash events, RamseySolutions.com slash events. I would love to see you there. High five you, hug you. We're going to have a big time. All right, to the phones we go, 888-825-5225. Sterling, I wish my name was Sterling. So, and he's from Charleston. He's got Doesn't that sound two right? Great from Charleston. It's perfect. Sterling from Charleston. I'm a little jealous of your name, sir. Sterling, <laughs> how can we help? Hey, buddy, I really appreciate that. I'm jealous of how smart you guys are. Actually. Well, I'm about to expose that that is unplaced jealousy here, but we are going to try to help you. What's going on today? Well, I appreciate it. Hey, I have, uh, I've been dealing, I've been um, listening and doing the Dame Ramsey thing for the last five years. I'm, I'm basically debt free now because of y'all, and I want to just thank you very much for all that. I, I really, truly do. Oh, congratulations. Um, I'm a yes. huge I'm a huge fan, and um, but I did. I was looking at um, at this solar thing. I, I looked at the um, the last episode where Dave had a, a question on there, and I'm I'm just kind of curious because the way I look at it is a little bit different. Um, you know, I like to say I'm debt free, but the way I look at it is my utility bill is a debt, and it's a lifetime debt. And if I go and put solar panels on my home, I'm going to eliminate that, and when my panels are paid off. I'm not going to have a utility bill or a solar payment. And that's when I actually own my own electricity. I am my now my own electric electric company. I'm not depending on the local utility that has ever changing, increasing rate. Okay. Um, Sterling, Sterling, you, Sterling, I'm yeah. interrupting uh, only because you have proven to us all that you did a really good job listening to their sales pitch. I feel like you've read the brochure seven or eight times. 
You nailed it. Yeah. You laid it out exactly and the way we the see it. if the world goes down, <laughs> Sterling's going to have electricity. And We're all coming will. to Charleston to, to have a grill out at Sterling's house. It's burgers right. and dogs. Well, no, Sterling, right. listen. All right, well, so I, I let me ask you some I questions. Supply, I have gas appliances, so I'll still be able to cook those for y'all. Oh, thank, there you thank go. You. But you go. I, uh, Sterling, I want to ask you some questions. How much is it going to cost you? Because you're going to have to uh, finance it after, from the yeah, company. Yeah, after the tax credits, okay, it's yeah. going to cost me roughly about $10,000. $10,000 total for your solar panels. After the tax credits, well, after the 55% back, because we get a 26%, a 25% state tax credit, and we also get a 30% federal Okay, but uh, how is that applied? Because, again, you are nailing the talking points. How is that applied? What's your upfront cost? It's more than 10000 no, okay, so it's twenty thousand. We'll call it twenty thousand. I know. I've been down this road before, Sterling. I get yeah. it. Twenty thousand. So twenty grand. Yep. All right. Yep. And so, how long is that going to take you to pay off? Well, it all depends on the loan. So let's say it's set up on a ten-year loan. I'm going to put it on ten years. Sure. And the loan payment is going to be less than. It's about twelve dollars less than what my utility bill payment is. Uh huh. A month. Uh huh. And it never goes up. It's a fixed rate, oh, which I is know. really good. I know. So you're paying. You're but, gonna. You're gonna. You're gonna borrow money to save money down the line on your utility bill. And I don't buy it. I don't believe that your utility bill goes to zero. So you've bought that oh, bill of goods too. That's not absolutely okay. true. I don't think that's true. I would challenge you to research that a little bit more. And the sales okay, guy's well, not no, the let's guy. Let's say it doesn't go to zero. Let's say it doesn't go to zero. Let's just say. It's very minimal. Let's say it goes from two hundred a month to thirty dollars a month. All right. They do, work, they do do that. I get it, brother. So run the math on that. All right. So we've saved how much money on that example? One seventy, right? Yeah, one hundred seventy bucks a month. Yep. Per month times twelve. I don't have a calculator. Hold on. Let me get out there. Well, little... I don't. Uh, we'll call it fourteen hundred a year. Yeah, <laughs> right. So fourteen hundred a year, but you paid ten thousand in loans plus interest. Here's the deal. If you want it so bad. Save up the ten thousand and pay cash. Okay, that's my. That's what I was going to ask you. Okay, so don't borrow the money. Not a bad thing. Okay, don't borrow. Solar's not bad. I love the sun. I need a little okay. more sun. Look at me. I'm pasty. I could use <laughs> a little more vitamin D, Sterling. But please come to Charleston. It's, <laughs> it's eighty five today and perfect. Oh, very jealous. Wish we were there. Yeah, Sterling. We're never going to encourage anyone or suggest to anyone to go into any kind of debt even as for the sun even for the sun period uh, period, period. The, a mortgage is the one type we won't yell at you for but we have our formula that we kind of run it through but other yep. than that we're not we're not going to sit here and say oh yeah you should go take out a loan for 10 years for solar pl- panels because okay. everything i have read and again i'm not i'm not deep into this i'm not a solar panel expert really? i know you're surprised. shocked i know everyone's shocked even though I drive a Tesla, I'm not into <laughs> oh, the solar panels. This is Mrs. Electric right but here. But most of what I have read, Sterling, when it comes to renovations on homes and, and getting the value of your home up, solar panels, it's a negative. Like, it, it does not no. increase value for your home. I know you're not looking for the value of your home. You're looking for your utility bill. Um, so my thing yeah, would be, if rates, you want to save Because the rates are going up so much. It's crazy what they've done in the last... Even in the last twelve months, I mean, I've gone I hear from you. twelve cents. But Sterling, you like got to do cents. right. But you got to do more research than the company brochure that they've that and they've given to make to sure. No, no, I, no, I have. I All want, right, no, I have. Pay so, cash. So listen, you, you yeah. Need, so listen, do, do your solar panels. I think it's great if you want to do that. But just pay cash. Don't take out a That's loan. Right. Go into debt. Acqu- acquire risk. For the fact to have these solar panels. So that's going to be true for anything, uh, including the sun. What do you call those things that we see on TV and cartoons where a person's trying to get sun? It's like a oh, silver. the reflector thing. Is that a reflector? Yeah. That's not a solar panel, though. That's a solar no, panel for your face. that's not a solar panel. I know. I kid. You know, listen, you got to be careful about all these things. There's hey, a lot of nuances. Yeah. You do your homework. Uh, oof, I don't know. I like paying for my electricity. It's not dead. It means I'm cool and warm. We've been doing business at Ramsey for more than 30 years. By now, we're a well-oiled machine, but it wasn't always that way. Yes, we've always had a vision, always had determination, and a drive to help people, but what we didn't have 
was one central place to access all our numbers so that we could get further ahead or quickly see when we needed to pivot. We were always jumping back and forth between different systems and spreadsheets. So when NetSuite by Oracle helped us wrangle our revenue, inventory, expenses, and more into one place, it was a game changer. And NetSuite's number one cloud financial system can help your business gain the same visibility. Because businesses thrive on timely data. And NetSuite's real-time analytics can help your business have immediate access to your numbers daily so you always know where you stand and you can move quickly. So go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey today and set up a free product tour. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Welcome back, America. You've joined the conversation about your money, your work, and your relationships here on The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by my colleague, Rachel Cruz. We're here for you this hour. The phone number is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Back to the phones we go. Dallas, Texas is where Don awaits. Don, how can we help? Hi, Ken. Hi, Rachel. Good afternoon to you. Good to talk to you. What's going on? Well, here's the deal. Um, I'm 51. My wife's about to turn 50. Um, I work for the state. I'm a criminal fraud investigator. Um, my wife, um, through the Lord of Great Heaven above, she got a better job, and we're going to be making a lot more money, which, you know, God grace us. So the issue is she switched jobs. Now she has a $14,000 into her 401k. And um, the issue is, is that she wants to move it and not leave it there because it's kind of dead and kind of lose money. Now, the other issue is, is that we want to, with this increasing, and in about the next two to three months, we're going to be totally debt-free except for the house, okay? So no debt except the mortgage, which we're going to you know, still pay off a little early at the time and all that. But we want to start investing more to, to our age. Now, so my wife is an immigrant. Someone from the church, he, he's one of those guys, me doing what I do for a living, I don't trust him. He starts seeing how IULs are the best thing in the world, and then annuities and all this stuff, and for the new investments. And he, he gave the greatest spiel until I said, here's the thing, my, me and my wife trust the Dave Ramsey people like you, okay? We trust, we trust you. Um, the thing is, he saying, take this money, you'll be millionaires and all this money from an IUL, or take that 14000 from the 401k, you can move it into annuities and all yeah. this stuff. I don't, so my thing, my two questions is, she doesn't want to roll over to her new job on the 401k, that 14000 She wants to put into something else, maybe some kind of other savings like mutual funds, what have you. She's just, she's not a fan of stocks, you know. So my thing is, we're going to invest more. One, where should we move that fourteen thousand? Secondly, if we're going to invest more, should it be more in the four hundred one k? And also, should it be mutual funds or something for our age where we want to get that growth? Yes. Okay. Great question. So one thing she needs to understand, though, mutual funds are stocks. They're ninety to two hundred stocks put into a fund. So when you are investing in your four hundred one k, four hundred one k your Roth IRA, uh, you know, any types of those investments, those are just kind of the coverings under. They use that money and use that to invest within mutual funds, which we are a fan of. We are not a fan of single stocks. So I understand her risk if she's like, oh, I don't want to go put all my money in the stocks, in a stock, right? Because yeah. that feels uh, that feels scary. But with a mutual fund, you're diversifying your risk. You're within 90 to 200 stocks. Um, so if I were her, I would roll over that 14000 from her last job. You can even roll it over just to a traditional IRA. But if I were you guys at your age, Don, I would pay off your debt, like you said you're going to do in the first, in the next two to three months. And then I would be maximizing all of the retirement that I could. And so that is Roth IRAs. That is 401ks. Uh, if you guys even want to look into like your HSA, health savings account, there can be a point even with that. If you stop withdrawing for medical and you can use that as a retirement vehicle, all of that. So annuities, uh, the only reason that we would suggest ever even 
considering it is if everything is maxed out, if your house is paid off, you are done with everything, a, ver- a veritable immu- uh, uh, annuity is one that we would say you you could do, but we're just not a big fan of it. They don't keep up with inflation. There's tons of fees. They're really confusing. They're hard to transfer. It's kind of a mess. So no, annuities is not something that we are like big fans of. Again, there's fixed annuities. Ver- ver- Why can't I say that word? It's tough. Veritable it's a tough word. Annuities, Veritable. But, it's um, tough. But all that to say that would be the only reason, Don, that we would ever even consider that so no this guy in, in is the, in, the high, in the insurance the world. world i mean i know his spew i mean i know what he's what he's pitching it sounds effective uh and so no i would not be scared of what's going on the market yes did not do great last year but the market goes up and down all the time and you guys are in your 50s you still have another decade to write all this out so if i were you guys i would be flooding all of my retirement up to 15 percent of my income into retirement 401ks, Roth IRAs, traditional IRA if she rolls over from her job, uh, and then be working to pay off the house. That would be my goal because that's going to be the fastest way for you guys to build wealth. Because again, annuities, I mean, there's some of them don't even keep up with inflation. And so it's not, it it would not be a route that I would take. It's not a route that I'm taking personally. And Don, we want to encourage you, if you don't have a smart investor pro, you you say, hey, I trust the Ramsey people. And then you have a conversation with people that can, they can debate, they think point for point, and they got a very good sales case. We want you to get with a smart investor pro in your area. Go to RamseySolutions.com, interview two or three. And as Dave has said many, many times, we want to make sure that you understand why we say what we say and you understand why you believe that to be the best thing and i would take your wife with you so that's the best play they're gonna follow the advice that rachel just gave and they're gonna make sure you understand it so you're in charge so we want you to do that let's go to boston massachusetts now uh john is there john how can we help hey how's it going guys i appreciate you taking my call you bet um, so my situation is kind of a personal one. Um, I'm 26 right now, a decent amount of money saved up. I don't have a house yet. Uh, my only debt is my car. Uh, I owe about 11,000. Um, I'm working a sales rep, uh, role. And so with that, I get a car allowance. Um, now I have enough money right now to, in order to pay off the car. Um, I'm wondering, do I, pay it off up front and then continue to pocket the car allowance or do I just keep throwing the money from the car allowance towards the car over the course of the next year or so? Yeah. Will they still give you that car allowance even if you don't have the payments on it? Will they reimburse they you will. for other areas? Okay, yes. So in that case, I wouldn't 100% would just pay it off and then you can just in pocket it because at that point you have no risk. You don't owe anything on the car. If you switch jobs, you're not stuck in this loan that you could have had paid off and you're still paying interest, all of it. So yeah, if I were you, I would go ahead and just pay everything off and then pocket, yep, the car allowance if they'll do that. Okay. So basically like tomorrow would be the best bet. Just hey, get rid of the get rid of the loan, call it a day. And I would. How much do you have in savings? <laughs> I have about forty grand in savings. Oh yeah. Um wow. and that's your only debt. So why wait till tomorrow? I'm curious. Well, I guess right, yeah, right now would probably be a better bet. Huh? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm being serious on that question because let me tell you something. Between this phone call and the time it takes for you to get with your bank and pay it off today, you might run into somebody who's got a different opinion. You might start to doubt it and think about, well, I sure would like to keep that 11000 you know. And, and, and so we can all do this. I don't care if it's a relationship decision that we know we need to make, um, a, a financial decision, a professional decision, a physical decision. You know what? I probably should throw out all of the chips and salsa in my house if I want to lose 20 pounds. And then you go, if I don't do it right then and there, well, I can tell you I'm eating chips and salsa later that <laughs> night. I mean, and yeah. so it's this idea of if you've decided, act in this moment. Like, hang up the phone and start the process right now. And I just, I, 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 I'm, this is a human condition. We all do this. Once you decide, do it. Don't wait. Does it make sense? It does, yes. I guess the only thing kind of holding me back from it and the reason why I wanted to ask the question in the first place was that uh, we were trying to save up for a house, so I didn't know if it would make more sense to keep more money for a down payment or whatnot. Uh, rather than pay off the car since I have that car allowance coming in. Yeah, no, I um, hear you. No, yeah I, yeah, I would. Yep, yeah, I would still, I would be debt-free. And then the re- the remaining 
um, money that you have, you know, that 35,000, I would have an emergency fund. So I wouldn't even put that towards your down payment. I would look to see, okay, what's three to six months of expenses, take some of that cash, put it aside. And then from there, start building up your emergency yeah. or your down payments for baby step 3B. And the great thing is, John, you're having this car allowance come in. So that's like free money to Incredible. put toward the down payment yes. and not a car loan, nothing going I out. So, that, it, so you can just, yes. you know, save that up. So that's what I would do, John, in that order. Yeah, because here's what happens. Pay it off now. You have no debt. And ooh, we get a nice jump start in the form of a car allowance to building up that the, the down payment. I got to tell you, you're going to be so happy you did this. Don't wait. Hang up. Go. Go now. Do it. Do it right now. So exciting. You know, it'd be fun to see if we could zoom in and watch him do it. You know, see it live, see it live. You know, just some watch somebody just pay their car off because so So few people do that. But anyway, good stuff. Thank you for the call, John. uh, We appreciate you very much. All right. We'll be right back. Don't move. More Ramsey show coming up. back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by my colleague, Rachel Cruz. And if you're new to the program, whether it's on YouTube or uh, your favorite podcast platform or radio, Sirius XM, however you're engaging uh, with the program, uh, and you hear this jargon, you hear baby steps, you're kind of going, what's this whole thing about? Where do I fit in this deal? Uh, we've got a wonderful tool for you called uh, Get Started, and it'll allow you to just kind of see where you are financially and how we can get you plugged in and get the resources that you need. It's the Get Started button uh, on our website, RamseySolutions.com. RamseySolutions.com, click on Get Started, and uh, we'll get you off and run it. Let's go to Atlanta, Georgia now, where Hunter is. Hunter, how can we help? How are you doing, guys? Uh, we're having a blast. What's up? So I'm 20 years old, and I make about 72000 a year. Um, I'm really looking to get into a house either here soon or I'm thinking maybe I should wait next year for the housing market to kind of come down a little bit. I was just looking to get y'all's thoughts on that. Um, wow. Well, that's, um, that's great. I mean, you're a young, young guy and looking How much to, do you have saved? to buy a home. I've got about 6,000 right now. I haven't really started the saving process, Okay. but okay. just after paying off all my credit cards, that's kind of what I've been, been able to pull in within the past two months. Yeah, that's a great. I think, um, Hunter, are you in school at all or are you, you're just working full time? Just working full time. Okay. Good mom. <laughs> yeah, good for you. Good for you. Um, here's what I would do, Hunter. I feel like we answer these questions sometimes if I were to wake up in your shoes at 20 years old. Um, I'm assuming you have no other debt. You said you paid off your credit card, so no other debt. Just a truck note. Yep. Uh, just oh, a what? Just, just a, a truck note. Okay. How much is that? It's about $500 a month. Well, total, what's the loan? Mm, Thirty thousand. Whoa! Whoa! That's a Whoa. nice. What kind of truck? Truck hunter. Just an F one fifty. Just an F one fifty. That thing would run over my car <laughs> like it was a matchbox car. Those things are gigantic. Uh, and so you've got uh, a, a a truck note. And do you have any savings at all? Just the six thousand. Just the six. Okay. Okay. Wow. So um, here's what I would do, Hunter. I would Kelly Blue Book the truck and just see. Oh, that's my favorite thing to do. What year is it? 2015. 2015 F-150. All right. How many miles? Mm, 92. When did you buy it? Uh, two months ago. Okay. Recent purchase. Um, so we always say if you can't pay off your car in 12 to 18 months, you have too much car. So the fact that you make you make seventy a year is that what I heard? Seventy two, yes, ma'am. Seventy two, okay. Um, so you have no expense. You you're living with your mom, um, not a lot of expenses. So you could pay this off in a year. So if you loved the truck and wanted to keep it, I my next step would aggressively be paying off this truck. I would work extra. I would do it as I would pay this off as fast as possible. Uh, I would throw five grand of your six grand at it and get it out because we have found Hunter, the fastest way to build wealth 
from point A to point B and wealth that you that you keep, not just like this lottery winner type mentality, is becoming debt free, having savings in the bank that you can get to what you when you need, investing and real estate. So all of these are big components of building a really solid financial picture. So for you, that first hurdle is getting debt free. And so this will be your truck. So you could either sell it. Did anything come up, Ken? I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm narrowing it down. I was okay. letting you do the advice here. So I would I would either to get to get you on this plan faster would be to sell the truck and start saving up a fully funded emergency fund. But if you wanted to keep the truck, then it would take you, you know, nine months, 12 months longer in this process to pay it off. Then I would want you to get a big emergency fund of three to six months of expenses and then start looking to buy a home. And for your first home, um, you know, I would save anywhere from 5% up to 20. 20 is great. I know that's a lot uh, in the market today, but you avoid PMI. You avoid, there's a lot of great things of having that 20%. Um, but for first time home buyers, we would say 5%. So, so there's a couple of things I would do, Hunter, before I go and purchase a home. All right, so I want to give you the numbers to plug in. Okay, so what is it? At an outstanding state, all right, you it's worth $17,364, clean sixteen eight, average fifteen nine. Why did you get a $30,000 if you bought this two months ago? It looks like you paid double for it. <laughs> they were hard to find. I was trying to get I had a brand new F-150. And I was paying about a thousand a month for it, so I decided oh. to stop being stupid and I cut it in half. That's but I guess that's still not the smartest. No. Yeah. So you overpaid, um, and th- this is what this is uh, according to Edmonds. So I mean, you can do your homework on this, but that's what you're looking at. But if you were to do that, then how we walk people through that, Rachel? What do we? Yeah. Have so what do? you would do, Hunter, in this case, is you would sell it for what you could man i would go back to the guy and be like 25 <laughs> can, can i <laughs> who'd you buy it from you don't have to say their name we're not trying was to it a pro- was it a dealer or was it a individual it's a dealership it was a dealership yeah oh, they're, they not, they're not they're not gonna do that yeah. man hunter oh shoot i hate that for you did you did you look to see the value of of f-150s around at that at that year or you just were doing quick making quick decisions Making quick decisions, trying to get out of a yeah. bad decision. All right. So, and you know what, Hunter? This is great. You're 20 years old. That's you right. made a mistake. You can get out of this. Do you feel that? You feel that? You're like, oh, crap. I could have gotten this for 17000 but I paid thirty <laughs> for it. That wasn't smart. So you're learning this now, which is great. Learn it now versus learning it over and over and over again when you're 40 years old. So, so I would, I, if I were you, I would take the hit and just say, man, I'm going to go take out a small loan. And I would, you know, take out a, you know, twenty twenty one thousand dollar loan, which is going to cover your under because you're underwater in it. So it's going to cover the difference and leave you a couple of thousand bucks. Um, no, no, I wouldn't. You have money saved, no. Hunter. No, no, no. I'm so sorry. What condition is it in? What would you say? Outstanding. Outstanding, I would say. All right. So let's say you could get seventeen for it. All right. You've got six in the bank. All right. So if you get 17 for it, you're still going to have to get the smaller loan, like Rachel's talking about, that covers the difference. If you owe 30, so you got about 13 if you don't put any into it. If you put six into it, now you're down to seven grand. But the but challenge you is, have a car. I know. That's why I'm walking him through it. So you got to have a car. So I'd take the six, and I'd get myself a decent SUV that's going to get me from point A to point B. Yep. Okay. And now I'm going to pay off the seven as fast as I possibly can. That's, that's right. That's right. That's what I would do. And then, Hunter, you build back up. So then you get yourself a $15,000 truck after you save up some money, you sell the other one, and you kind of step your way into it. You get a decent car, and now we start saving for a home. That's the process, because here's if you don't do that, I want you to understand why Rachel's recommending this. This truck is devaluing every time you drive it, and unless you're going to go all in and pay the $30,000 off, like really soon, it just doesn't make sense to do that. You're so underwater with this thing. Yes, sir. Does that make sense to you? Yes, sir. So let's take the hit. So take the third. So yep, take the thirteen thousand dollar loan versus the thirty. That's right. You're switching. You're swapping those two, and then take. I would take five of the six. Have your baby emergency fund of a thousand dollars. Go get a five thousand dollar. There you go. Car, Civic, SUV, whatever it is, and it's not going to be a pretty car, Hunter. You're used to driving a brand new truck. Now you're used to driving a nice thirty thousand dollar truck. It's not going to feel like that, but that's okay. That's okay. Because again, your goal here is to get from point A to point B of building wealth. And the fastest way to do that 
is for you to use your income, a great income, Hunter. You're making $72,000 at 20 years old. It's incredible. I found him a car. Ah. Okay, I went on a website and uh, I typed in uh, used cars under 5000 in the Atlanta area. Uh, What'd you get? I see a 2002 Toyota Sequoia. Perfect. 225,000 miles, but those things will run for 500,000 miles. Yeah, and you miles. only need it for like seven more months. You only need it for like seven months because you're going to be saving it on the side too, Hunter, and First you're going to sell the Sequoia for $5,000 again because it's probably not going to go down in value. And then you're going to match it with another 5000 that you save from your income. And then you're going to step up to a $10,000 car and you're going to slowly keep doing that until you're to the point that you're like, yeah, I have some cash to spend. So it is possible. It's possible to do this. And that's what we would do, Hunter. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. All right. Hunter, Great job. Thanks is. for calling in. And that's the first vehicle I found. I mean, if you want the gas savings, how about a uh, Camry for $3,800? There you go. Come Those on. things will run. You can do this all day But long. your pride is going to hurt, Hunter. I know. Don't let your pride get in the way. Yeah. That's, You're 20. Uh, You're that doing Camry, great. That Camry's not pretty. But it's fine. And you're only going to have it for six months. There it is. So it can be done. Rachel Cruz, fun hour. Thanks for hanging out. Always fun to be with you. I want to thank James Childs and our fearless crew behind the glass for keeping us on the air. And we want to thank you, America. This is your show. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Ken. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. Solutions broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studio. This is The Ramsey Show. It's where we help you win in your life, specifically your money, and we look at it from a relational and a professional work standpoint as well. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague Rachel Cruz. The phone number, if you want to, if you want to jump in on the conversation, is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Let's go to Idaho Falls, Idaho. Merrill is there. Merrill, how can we help? Hi, Ken and Rachel. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. You bet. Well, um, kind of had a curveball thrown thrown at me. Um, I turn 61 next month, and I'm being downsized out of a 25-year career. Oh, oh gosh. About that. So, what, uh, what's yeah. the industry? Medical sales. Okay. Hmm. Um, I try to live life without any regret, but I've I got to be honest, I've regretted not finding you guys about a decade earlier. Mm. I'm new to you guys, and um, I you know, just appreciate what you do, but here's my situation. Life has changed, obviously. Um, I've not been the best with money throughout my life. Uh, we're looking at you know a, a massive change as we just spoke. My financial situation is this, is we're debt-free other than the house which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, How much do you own the uh, house? We owe 278. What's it worth? 600, six, between 600 and 650. Okay. Um, my, I've got a 401k. Um, last I checked was at about 540. Um, but 60 of that is in a 401h. And me not being the numbers guy, I'm sh- I don't think we can touch that. I think that's set aside for for healthcare going on, which mm-hmm. we need because my wife has issues, has her her entire life. Mm-hmm. So my initial question is this: um, Our mortgage is sixteen hundred a month. Would it be smart, and could I do it without getting destroyed by taxes to pay off the home out of the four hundred one k once? Once this is done, it would relieve some stress. It would cut into us substantially, you know, but then the second part of the scenario is, you know, work is, is on the horizon for sure for longer than I'd anticipated. And uh, what do I do next? Mm-hmm. So I want to focus on that. Part. Show. I want to focus on that part first and because and, real, real quickly, and then I want to walk through some money options here, Rachel. Yeah. Um, you've been in sales for a long time. 
And just because yes, you've sir. been in medical sales for 25 years, I believe you said, doesn't mean mm-hmm. that you can't sell something else. I mean, I think mm-hmm. you know this, but I, it's kind of a mindset thing to go, wait a second, just because I've got a lot of experience in one industry doesn't mean that I can't transfer the skill plus the experience to another industry. True or false? Mm-hmm. True. Um, I think what I found, though, even knowing this was coming is getting on some of the sites. I don't even know what to search out. You know, I don't even know, you know, just so new to the process, you know. And you well, look I'll help you with these, it. I'll help you with it. Here's okay, where I want awesome. you to start. I want you to start. Okay. Uh, do you want to stay in sales? Presumably you enjoy sales, and, and I think it's pretty obvious you're good at sales. Is that true? <clears throat> well, I can, to be honest, yes. I love sales as long as it's a specific type. I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, yep. Corporate America, at least in my industry in the last 10 years, has gotten pretty intense. And being an older guy, I want to help people. I would love to have a customer come to me and help them do the right, right. thing. If, um, now we're going somewhere. Is. Now we're going. So here's what I, this is tying right into the exercise I was going to give you. You don't have to answer it on the show. I don't want to put you on the spot. And I want to get to these money options. But I want you to think about the services or the products you think in your general area of Idaho Falls, the, the small businesses start there because you don't like big corporations. So let's look at small business. Now, in America, that's uh, I think that's a classification of about 500 employees or less. So what are the products or services in your area that you have a connection to? You like them, uh, uh, you use them, uh, or you, you know some companies that you hear good things about. And you know that when you sell something, you're selling a product or service that you believe in. Let's start the research there. Let's not just go on some job site and look for sales positions. Let's do some homework. Let's talk to people. You're 61. You know a lot of people. And I'm going to give you my book to get you jump started. It's called The Proximity Principle. Okay, I'm going to give that to you, um, and I want you to read it and leverage those relationships. If you want to, you could jump further on into the book and, and read about the web of connections. You know way more people than you realize. You put the word out about what's going on, the type of sales role you're looking for, the type of culture you want to be in. And Meryl, I'm, I've got news for you. In this economy right now, you're going to get hired quickly. But you got to be intentional, and you got to put mm-hmm. the word out. All right. Now I want to get to the I want to get to the money stuff here because Meryl said something, Rachel, that I I wanted you to weigh in on. Instead of using that four hundred one k money to pay off the house, if it's just you and your wife, and I don't know that it is, Meryl, but if it's just you and your wife, why not sell the house and maybe downsize a little bit, and you still take away the debt, but you still have the five hundred and forty thousand. I believe you said in the four hundred one k. Is that an option? And Rachel, is that a good idea? Yeah, what, what, how attached are you guys to this house? Well, of course, you know, we've been in it 20 years, and we still have two older children that okay. are not quite flown the nest yet, but are very close. How old hopefully. are they? <laughs> um, 19 and 20. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, and you guys are, sa- you're 61, is that what you said? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so you're past the 59 and a half age mark to be pulling from retirement, so... My my thing, could you pull, yep, could you pull 278 out of, out of retirement? That would leave you guys, besides the 401H that you have, it would leave mm-hmm. you around 200000 left in that 401k if you just did that today. Um, so my mm-hmm. question would be to run the numbers for you guys to say, okay, it, it, does your wife have any retirement either? Does, is, does she have anything? No, she's um she's been disabled lifelong, and we've, we've not pulled from disability for uh, different reasons. Okay. Okay. Um, so I a stay at home mother and did an awesome job. Okay. So. Wonderful. Nope. That's great. That, I applaud that for sure. Um, so what I would look at to say, okay, with this 200,000 in retirement with a new job that I'm going to take and flood as much of that money back into the retirement, mm-hmm. wh- what can we live off of? What is our lifestyle? And so that's going to be you guys running some numbers on what your budget looks mm-hmm. like, what your lifestyle looks like. But honestly, Mira, I, I probably would not do that. No. Um, I'd sell the house if it was me because the 19 and 20 year old need to fly the coop at some point. And if we got a downsize, that'd be $400,000 in equity from the house. And you pay cash for something small, cash for something for 400,000. Then then there's no mortgage in the picture. You guys have your 500, you know, half a million dollars in your 401k Mm -hmm. left and Uh, work for five or six more years. And you're good. Yeah. So it's basically like, yes. So that, I mean, honestly, Meryl, that's probably what I would do. But I know that's so easier said than done. I always hesitate with the house Mm -hmm. because I understand. But I would not pull 
278 out no. of your 401k because you guys are going to have to eat. And so you want to be able to run some of those numbers. And I would sit down with a smart investor pro for them to look at your entire financial picture for you guys, um, since you're going to be the sole provider and have been, and just to kind of run some of those numbers to say, okay, what, how much do I have to make in a job? But you don't want to work forever either. You want to retire. Um, so look at looking at those options is going to be important. And you did great, Meryl. People are in a lot worse situation than you guys are. So you said I was bad with money, but you guys are doing great. You're doing great. Thank you for the call. Don't move. More Ramsey Show coming up. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices, and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. Welcome back, America. Thank you for joining us here on The Ramsey Show. The phone number to jump in is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Let's go to Syracuse, New York. Julie is there. Julie, how can we help? Hi, Mr. Ken. Hi, Miss Rachel. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. I am 62. I have, I'm single. I have one son. I'm debt-free. Yeah. And I need and want to retire, I put 18% in my 401k. I have a nine-year-old car with 110,000 miles. I have my bills. I can get by on approximately 3,200 monthly expenses, a little tight, but I can do it. But I will have to pay for my health insurance on top of that. I want to do some renovations, kitchen cabinets and flooring, and would cash flow this. My question is, should I drop my 401 to 15% and use the extra cash for the renos? Or honestly, can I, is it even safe for me to retire? My goal is not to spend my 401. I have one son, and I want to leave the base of that to him, mm-hmm. maybe just pull off some interest if I needed. Yeah. I have checked into Social Security. I will get approximately 2000 a month for that. And I have checked into uh, my pension, and I'll get approximately 2000 for that. My 401 is Two hundred and sixty six thousand five hundred and forty four dollars and twenty two cents. And of course, that's really continuing to lose. Well, it's not losing unless you were to pull it out. It's just riding the roller coaster right now. And the stock market obviously hit hard last year, but. We it's recent, returning. It's, gonna, mean, it's, it's doing better. They're expecting it to, to to end up positively this year. So it may take a couple of years to get back to How much is previous. in your pension, Julie? They don't give you a number because there is no lump sum payment. I've checked into that. You can't take – there's not an option for lump sum for you? No. Okay. So the pension – um, and Social Security is going to get you four thousand a month. So that's yeah. Uh, and 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 do you owe anything on the home? Taxes. I own my home. Okay. So you're completely debt free. Completely. So debt-free. your question my is: you... Bless his heart, paid off the base of my home. Now, what oh. he doesn't know is I have the money in the bank <laughs> saved for him. But so how much is in how much wonderful. is in the bank besides retirement? What what else do you have to your name? Okay. I just put 42000 into a CD because it was in my money market and it wasn't making anything and I'm getting 4% on that. And I only did it for six months because the market's so volatile that if the interest rates went up, I wanted to be able to change it. Other than that, I have at least 26000 in there. 
42000 or 26000 I have 42000 that I just moved from my money market into a CD. Into a CD. For, oh, okay. for six months. And I have 26000 in the bank on top of that. Oh, on top of that. I'm sorry. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, and Julie, your question is, should you take, you've been funding 18%. Should you take it down yes, they to match me 15? 2%. And you're asking if you should take it down to 15. And you're 62, yeah. is that correct? Yes. And what's your plan for retirement? Do you have a date? Do you look out I there and say... I was October of this year. Okay. I really wanted to go, and my son wanted me to go in January. But mm. with the market, it's just it, it's not feasible, but it's becoming harder and harder after 40 years in this. It's, Yep, I hear you. I hear you. Well, the the positive thing, Julie, if your numbers are all correct, um, I mean, you're going to have four thousand dollars a month from the pension and Social Security, um, so that's going to take care of all of your expenses. You don't have any debt. You have no payments. So anything extra that you would take for renovations or do things you want to do will be interest off that four hundred one k, and that will just continue to grow. Uh, I know that it looks bleak right now. Uh, but but the market is returning. And over time, I mean, you're 62. So by the time you're 82, that's going to continue to grow. Um, and you can even take how much of the renovations because even taking some of the money that you have in your CD, you could take a few thousand dollars for that and get some new cabinets too. How much will that cost the renovation? I'm hoping to keep it at 30 okay. for flooring throughout the house and then okay. maybe some cabinets for the kitchen. But on that four thousand that I get a month, that's before taxes. Plus, if I quit now, I don't have my health insurance that's already taken out of my paycheck. So I'm going to have that on top of it. Makes me very nervous. Yes. Okay. Well, so let's look at this. What is it? Let's say that you could walk away today. Nothing to be nervous about. Let's say you could walk away today. What does retirement look like for you? What do you think your day looks like? And I'm serious, like through the week, are you, are there hobbies? Are you doing anything? Are you sitting around watching the prices, right? I mean, what, what does it look like for you? Um, just lunch and a movie with the girls and maybe go visit my son. I love it. Yeah. Here, here's one thing I would recommend. Um, I've been studying this because I think retirement's overrated. And what I mean by retirement is this idea that I work for a long time, let's call it 40 years, and all of a sudden I just stop one day. And now I'm just recreational. And there is a lot of data out there about how that really uh, begins a, a physical, a cognitive, emotional decline. And so I'm going to challenge you to say that part of the fix for this could be you could walk away from your current job and retire, but you could pick up a part-time job. That's fun and, you know, in a great environment, you're doing something you enjoy, no stress. And that's how you fund projects like the renovation. I just don't like the idea of pulling a large sum of money to do a renovation to a home at this stage in your life. Now, I'm talking to you as though I would be talking to my mom. And I'd say, this is what I would, I wouldn't do it that way. I would find a way to save up the money and cash flow it. Uh, I'd work a little bit longer. Uh, on the health care issue, I would take care of those things and not be in a hurry uh, for traditional retirement. I, I just think I'd take a little bit more time, be a little bit more patient, maybe a little bit more aggressive. Or if I'm going to retire, I'm going to find a way to still make some money. Okay. Julie, how much will the health care be? Have you run any numbers on that, what it'll be for you? I have looked in for a moderate, and that means if anything were to happen, you've got at least 10000 out of pocket, which really terrifies me. It's going to be about four to 500 a month. Four to 500 a month. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, if yeah, if I were you with the renovation stuff, I would go slow. Yeah. I mean, they're not going to be pulling any money out. Um no, I would not pull out any money from the four hundred one for renovations. That's just not. An yeah, and I would, and and you have, yeah, and you have a good cushion. I mean, you have eighty eight thousand liquid, um, yeah. and so that yeah, that's a that's a great emergency fund. <laughs> Probably way more than what you need, because uh, we even talk about you know it's three to six months of expenses. I would and invest that. Uh, I would sit down with a smart investor pro, and I would invest a good chunk of that. Make that, that start working for you now. Because now's a good time to buy into this market. It's going to go up. The historical trends just lay this out. This is not uh, some crystal ball, Ken's got a prediction. 
uh, I, I would sit with one of our smart investor pros, Julie, and I'd take some of that cash um, and, and I would invest that and, and let that grow. Yeah, keep, keep maybe 20 in, yeah. in a, Good you know, you have it in a fund. CD, yeah, or a high yield savings and all of that. They're getting great rates of return, like what you're seeing, which is awesome. But keep maybe 20 in that that you don't touch. It's just there for God forbid you just need it one day. Don't, you know, just don't even think about that. And then everything else to just say, what what can I put my money in that's going to make a large, because the market right now, you'll get a better return yeah. still with the CD. So turn off the news to Julie, because I think sometimes we can get in our heads about how scary everything is, and it feels like the world is crashing down. But sitting with, down with somebody and running these numbers out extensively of your lifestyle, what you need to pay and get some of these facts down. I think is really going to help you make that decision. But your lifestyle is 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 low, so I feel like you're at a point that retirement's not too far off. That it really is doable for you with these numbers. So I would not be as fearful uh, as what you're feeling. But get some more numbers with your health care and all that, and look to see. Down, sit down with a Smart Investor Pro and see how much can I, how much interest can I just live off of off these investments by investing even more into it. Yeah. Julie, thank you so much for the call. You're going to figure this out. Facts are good. Get as many facts as possible. I'd love you to sit with one of our smart investor pros in your area as well. RamseySolutions.com for that. Don't move. More Ramsey Show coming up. Y'all, there's a lot you can't control when it comes to healthcare, but there is something you should check out that can help. Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM is not insurance. It is budget-friendly, biblically-based health cost sharing. That means a community of members helping share the burden of each other's healthcare costs. They help people just like you in all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Learn more today at chministries.org slash budget. Welcome back, America. Thrilled to have you here listening and watching The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by my colleague, Rachel Cruz, this hour. We're here for you. The phone number to jump in for your money questions, your work questions today, 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. I'll tell you what I think would be fun. I'd love somebody who's really struggling um, in your occupation because you're in a really nasty or maybe toxic environment or you got a, a real doofus of a boss or maybe some gossipy coworkers. I'd like Rachel to weigh in on some of that because you're so what? nice. And I, I could give them some tactical stuff on, on work, but I'd, I would like uh, maybe a, a pretty juicy situation for you to weigh just in like on. A terrible boss situation. Uh, or maybe they're just feeling like, ah, I, I feel stuck because I – I've got to pay off debt, and we can get you out. But if you're dealing with a tough situation, let's take one of those calls. I'd like to bring Rachel into that. I think she'd give some really, really interesting advice. I really do. Well, thank you, Ken. I think I'd like to see a little sass. Let's see. A little sass coming out uh, of you. The sass only comes when it's natural. We're not going to. No, I know. We're but not going to. Uh, I think you're a fighter for people. You hear a negative situation, you get a little fired up. So I'm hoping for that. We'll see. 888-825-5225. All right. Charlotte, North Carolina is where we go. Phil is there. Phil, how can we help? Hi. Uh, thank you so much for taking my call. I'm sorry I don't have a toxic situation, but I do have a, I do have a question just bottom line up front. Great. No uh, problem. What, trying, what's going on? Trying to, trying to figure out uh, if I should stay in the military or not. Oh. Uh, I'm in nine years now, and I just feel like I'm professionally stagnating. Um, what branch? But I'd rather not say, just keep it kind of hey, synonymous. I appreciate that. Made, well, thank you for uh, thank for you for service. serving our country. You're yes. a great American, Phil, and so we're grateful for that. So, why do you feel like you're languishing? What's going on? Uh, so, if, it's kind of a long story. I'll try and keep it short. I have two approaches. I have a logical approach and an emotional approach. Hmm. The logical approach says I should stay in this practically recession-proof job provide securities, benefits, a house for my, for my wife and my family. Um, and at the end of 11, at the end of 11 more years, 
we get a, we get a pension, and now my wife doesn't have to work. She could want to work, but she doesn't have to. Uh, what now that makes that it makes logical sense. Yep. But it comes at a cost of mental exhaustion. Exactly. Professionally stagnating, and when I get out. I would be behind my peers in the corporate realm as far as what they're doing in, in corporate America. Mm-hmm. That's one side. The emotional side is I know I can get out. And I know I can make six figures. Yes, sir. Uh, I've had multiple. I've had multiple offers, but it's not as stable, and I'm essentially walking away from what could potentially be probably a multi-million dollar pension and take and taking away that security. From uh, uh, from something that's more dependable. Um, yeah, so I think you've created, logic, and then and then there's there's logic, and then there's emotion. I'm wondering yep. if there is a spiritual or other answer that can sort of provide some guidance. There in is that, in that realm. I'm so glad you took us there. I probably would not have gone there, but since you took us there, I'll I'll step right in there. I do believe there's a spiritual answer. And I think it corrects the false narrative that you've created. I think you've created a false choice. Uh, But I will tell you that the spiritual answer first is that you were created to work. The, The Bible says you are uniquely and wonderfully made, and part of that isn't just the skill. The other part of that is what you desire to do. There, there are just certain things. Have you ever met somebody that's just doing a job and they just, they've got a bounce in their step and they love it and you talk to them about it and you go, I just love this. That's unique to them because somebody else could do that job and be miserable within 30 minutes. And so to acknowledge your creator and your unique creation and how you're wired, that's the spiritual answer. I will also go one step further. There's a soul craving to make a mark to make a difference. Rachel's soul craving is different than mine. Yours is different than ours. We all have this craving to make our unique contribution. And and it just, once we start getting a sense that what we're doing isn't it, and I think that's where you stand right now. You may not know what it is, you might, but what you feel right now is a meaninglessness to what you're doing, even though that what you're doing is not meaningless. it's It's a missing soul connection. And so that's the spiritual answer. Now, real quick on this false narrative. This idea that if I go make six figures in the corporate world, and I'm so glad you acknowledge that you can because you can, but that I go do that and yet it's not stable because corporate America, we lay people off, of recessions happen. I, I get it that you've got the fixed income and the, the uh, pension with the military. But at what cost? Of your soul dying? And you having to fight that battle to not let that affect your marriage, to not let it affect your mental health, your physical health, your emotional health. I mean, the data says that that people that are unhappy at work, I just shared this on my show, Rachel, this week. People that are unhappy at work live on average 10 years less mm. than people who are happy. This is science here. This isn't my opinion. Yeah. So, uh, Phil, I, I think that you got to go make more money, invest that money wisely. Your wife won't have to work. And I think you can make more over time, using our investment principles, and you can get another job if you get laid off. Oh, I've been how laid old off. are you, Phil? Thirty-one. Oh my gosh! Yeah. You can out earn that that military pension by just going to work in, in in the real world. So I don't think you have to worry about it. So what if you get laid off? I was laid off at thirty-two. I made more money the year after I got laid off than the two years prior. So this idea that I'll have to stay in the military. That's stable. And if I go to the private sector, even though I can make more money, it's super risky. I don't think you're risking anything. Does that make sense? It it does. I, I wouldn't say, and maybe I misspoke, I don't want to say super risky, just relative to the relative to the other decision. Then, 100%. Then, then it, it would be riskier. I acknowledge um, that. But I, that's a calculated I, I, risk. You see the difference? Right. Um, I'm I'm curious. I mean, I've read I've read the book. I'm I'm curious just on, on your all's opinion. I understand your views on pensions and how they're less in control of they're more in control of the companies than of the individuals. Uh, does that same rule apply to the to the like government like government pensions? Well, you tell me. I, I'm not, I haven't served in the military. Do you have any control over your investment strategy within that pension fund? Yes. Okay. How much? 
Well, with the TSP, like we we can do whatever we want with it. Exactly. Uh, but, but with the with the pension at the end of it, you you it gains uh, around right. I, and I, I I don't know this. I just know what I read on charts. But it gains over time with cost of living. Sure. Uh, but at, let's do the flip the side though. Forty-two. Let's, let's flip this though. How much money are you making right now? Um, based on what the Website says, inc- including everything, eighty-seven thousand. No, I'm asking you your salary. That's what you make. Yes. Okay, so I, that threw me off how you answered that. But okay, you make eighty-seven thousand. What if you're making one hundred eighty-seven thousand, and you're investing wisely, and you have no debt? How much more ground are you going to make? Have you run those numbers? I mean, I think you really have to because you're you're aware of what you could make. Well, what if you lived financially frugally and you walk the baby steps out and you're investing that money? How much further are you going to be ahead uh, after all those years? Because here's the I deal. Are, I, think, I think those are lofty goals for one hundred eighty-seven. Well, but sure, I'll play. Sure. Well, Phil, I, I mean, what I would say to you is you're 31. The point that Ken is making is that you can go, make, even if it's not 137, maybe it's 120, right? You, but you're making great money out in the private sector. You start investing, yep. you retire a, mil- a multimillionaire because you would do that if you start investing 15% of your income into retirement. So regardless of whether it's huge millions, medium millions, the quality of life That's between it. now and retirement, you can't put a price on that. And I would rather enjoy so awesome. my life and retire with, I'm just throwing out numbers, $2 million than $3.2 million and have actually enjoyed what I'm doing. So that's where you can't put a cost on it, Phil. So I think that you have a lot to offer. And I think that, yes, yes, relatively there's risk, but honestly out there, I'm like, there's so much to be had and so much opportunity that you're going to continue to make more than what you're going to make the first year into working. So I think, I think that you're, you're spot on. Yeah. Don't live a life that you regret. You got this. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by my colleague, Rachel Cruz. We're here for you this hour, taking your money questions. And if uh, if you got some job-related junk that affects the money, meaning you want to get out, but you're worried about the money, uh, I'll take those questions today with Rachel as well. The phone number is 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. Well, uh, it is that time of year where I spit nails. And that's when I think about taxes. Uh, if you got questions about taxes, we get it. Taxes are confusing. It's scary. And we want to unpack a question, Rachel, from one of our listeners regarding taxes. The question is, I'm really nervous about trying to do our taxes ourselves. Believe me, I get it. Uh, but it's almost $300 to get them done with a tax pro. What should I do? Well, if your tax situation is simple... You can definitely try using a tax software like Ramsey Smart Tax. Ours is the best, and it's going to guide you through uh, the online filing process step by step. And you don't pay until you file, so you've got a chance to figure out, did I get it right? Do I feel good about this uh, before you submit? Now, the federal classic version of Ramsey Smart Tax comes with built-in support. That helps. So you do it all yourself, but if you're a little bit unsure You got that little chat bubble, I'm guessing, you know, that we all love. (laughs) Hey, help, you know, one of those deals. Uh, And uh, there's a premium version that gives you priority level support for your questions. So if you still feel uncomfortable filing taxes on your own, it's worth connecting with a tax pro. We've got you covered there as well. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash tax. That's RamseySolutions.com slash tax to learn more about Ramsey Smart Tax or our Ramsey Trusted Tax Pros like one of our endorsed local providers. That's RamseySolutions.com slash tax. Now, I would be the person who just does not trust my ability with oh, details or, quite frankly, 
to be focused long enough to do it right. <laughs> to do it like, all I'm well. in there and all of a sudden I'm like, squirrel! And I'm <laughs> looking at the latest news story or something. And so for years, we've yep. used a Ramsey trusted tax pro, an endorsed local provider. And, and yes, I got to pay for it. But the peace of mind uh, to not it, yeah. worry about it. So yep. there you go. I hear that. All right. 888-825-5225 is the number. Let's go to Austin, Texas. Teresa is there. Teresa, how can we help? Hi. Hi. Thanks so much for taking my call today. Sure. Um, I am getting ready to pay off my the rest of my student loan. And after that, I will just I will be debt free except for my mortgage, which is two hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm a sole parent of a 10 year old and um, I really want to attack this um, $260,000 mortgage, but I'm feeling anxious or like I need, you know, maybe an extra big emergency fund bigger than the next person kind of thing. And I, I just wanted to get some guidance on that. I am driving a 12 year old car that has 200,000 miles. My mechanic does think it will make it three more years, but I do have that in my head that, you know, it might not. And I do have a very stable income, but I still am, you know, like a little bit worried about going gung-ho in the 260 without a big enough emergency fund. Yeah, absolutely. Um, How much do you make a year? I'm self-employed and I have two um, sources of income and it's around 216. Well done. And how much, if you've did, if you did a budget today, how much do you think your monthly expenses are out of that? Um, I should have a better answer to this question. <laughs> um, my son, my, my mortgage is around 3,500 and my son goes to a private school, which is about 15,000 a year. Um, and I am, you know, I have, I have been putting money in retirement, even though I know that you guys don't teach that way. I've, I've been doing that. And, um, so, and after my student loan is paid, then the rest of the way that frees up an additional 500 a month. For sure. Okay. So yep. With your mortgage, private school, all of that, that's, that's 4,500 and then cost of living, everything else on top of that. So what I would do, Teresa says I would do a very detailed budget. And if you stay on the line, Austin will pick up and we'll get you um, a subscription to every dollar plus. Cause I do want you to know, it's going to help answer this question for you to say, Hey, what does yeah. every month look like? And you're going to list out all of your expenses. You're going to understand a budget, live on that for, you know, probably two, three months to really understand this is a realistic budget for me. And then if I were in your shoes um, and hearing kind of you're a little risk averse, you're, you're wanting a lot of safety, which I totally understand. We say anywhere from three to six months of expenses, but being self-employed, uh, being a single mom, Yep. Having a child, all of that, I would probably err on the side of the six months just to give you extra peace. It's not going to hurt anything, um, and I would and I would put that, and I would even pause your investing to speed that up to get that amount of cash in the bank. Do you have any cash uh, besides what you're going to use to pay off your student loan? Do you have anything else? Yeah, after the student loan is paid, I'll have twenty thousand in my emergency. Fund. Oh my gosh! Okay, well done. That's amazing. So you've already jump started that. So I would look at your expenses for your month because the way I look at the emergency fund, people kind of do these numbers differently depending on um, you know what they want. I when Winston and I looked at our emergency fund number, I said. I want to know that if we had no income coming in, we would not have to majorly change our life. So what is our day-to-day life? What is a what is a monthly budget look like for our life? And multiply that by six. For some people, they say, just look at my needs. Yep. Just, you know, I would cut everything out. And, that, and that's great, too. I'm like, I just like the extra, extra cushion. <laughs> it just feels good for me. Um, and so that if so run those numbers how you want to say, hey, if something were to happen and I wasn't making any income, you know, how much do I want to have saved and, and look that look at that monthly budget that's going to help you. And I would multiply that by six, start saving towards okay. that um, and put that in a high yield savings account, a money market account, get have it accessible, though, to be able to get to it if you needed it. And then after that, Teresa, since with your car, I mean, I would put you're making great money, you're going to be able to cash flow yep. some stuff. But if you even want to, you know, have another savings account that you put a few thousand away for a car and and make that a sinking fund where you save up a little bit over time. And then, you know, in two years when you're like, okay, I'm going to sell this junky car, I've saved up this 
over time and I'm going to apply this to the car, you can do that as well. So, um, but the, the great thing here is your income and you're going to be able to do a lot with that. You're going to be able to invest and uh, get that emergency fund really quick. And I, I, yeah, you're in a really great position and, and cheers to you for being a single mom. Yes. I owe single parents out there. Um, we have a lot of respect for you because I know yes. there's a, there's a lot riding on your shoulders. So well done. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I had I had a little, um, you know, in 2020, my income had some. One of my contracts was not stable, and then I got the second one, and the second one is lower paying, but it's very stable, and I can work as many hours as I want. So That's part great. of me is like. You don't have to be as risk averse as you are, but I still, you know, am feeling, you know, really cautious. Yeah, yeah and I get that. Oh, that's I fine. Think it's okay. That's yeah. not gonna. That's not gonna hurt you. Uh, you know, in any yeah. way. And I gotta say this: beyond being a single mom, you're a solopreneur, and I mean, you you got two businesses. I mean, you're our superwoman. You really are. And and a credit to you. There's no stopping you. The reason I'm putting that out is it's tough enough being a single mom, but then you're running your businesses, you're crushing it. As Rachel said, you've done a wonderful job. So I hope you're encouraged uh, that you're that it's okay to be cautious, but now be bold because you've got a good strategy. Yes. And, and listen, you're yes. going to get where you want to get. There's no stopping you. You got me? Thank you. Thank you. you. I really appreciate the 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 kind words. Thank you so much. You bet. I mean, you're absolutely, absolutely amazing. You know, Rachel, there's something about that mama bear. These deadbeat dads, uh, spineless, gutless. I know they're in pain, but they're still spineless and gutless because she's in pain and she shows up, mm -hmm. takes care of the babies, starts one business somewhere along the line. Another one has gotten herself in good financial position and it just needs to be called out that yep. it is hard to stop a mama bear. I know. I love it. She's killing it. You Absolutely. Know? Incredible. Absolutely yeah. incredible. Really awesome. Mm. Thank you so much, Teresa, for uh, the call and for sharing a little bit of your story. You're a rock star. And uh, you know what? Let's come around these single moms, shall we? If there's one in your community, let's come around them. Whatever that looks like, let's help them out. They deserve it. Uh, great hour, Rachel Cruz. Thank you so much yes, for hanging you. out. As always, I want to thank James Childs and the illustrious crew behind the glass that keep us on the air. And you, America, for listening. Thank you. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Rachel Cruz. If you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studio, this is The Ramsey Show. It's where we help you win with your money, and we'll look at your work component, your relationship component around the all-important element of money so that you can win and win big and live that life you desire to live. 888-825-5225 is the phone number, 888 888- 825-5225. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by my colleague, the incomparable, the fabulous, Rachel Cruz. And uh, we're here for you this hour. She'll take your money questions. I might pipe in. I might not. You never know. And uh, if you got any of those work questions that relate to making more money, getting out of a tough environment, uh, but not losing that income, I'm here to help in those specific questions as well. Let's go to Houston, Texas, where Layla joins us. Layla, how can we help? Hi, thank you guys for both taking my call. You bet. I appreciate it. Sure. Um, we went to Missouri. My husband and I are getting close to retirement age, and uh, we're just looking for a place to get. We love Houston, but city life, we don't want to, you know, we need a little get away from city life and retirement age. Um, so long story short, went to Missouri, found a piece of property, fell in love with it, um, and uh, we would just want to know if it's a good idea to buy it or not. My son's in love with it. He wants to move out of Texas. And he wants to work in Missouri, um, and he says he would love to live there and raise a family on that piece of property. So the end goal is just going to be him raising his family, but we're going to enjoy it while we're, we're here. Okay. And you're calling us to get our opinion on this. I'm curious, what are you nervous about? What are you unsure about? What's the piece of information we don't have as to why you wouldn't buy it? Well, 
I just want to make sure, like, I'm we're financially okay right now. What does um, that mean? And I just want to make sure. Sh- so, um, the uh, we have uh, we have uh, our some investments, um, and we have how um, much are in those? We could pay for the property. Uh, okay, so investments are about eight hundred, eight hundred thousand. And are those in retirement um, or just in the market? When you say investments, is it funds. mutual funds? Uh, Four hundred one k Roth IRA or just strictly mutual funds? Mutual funds, Roth IRA, and I think a SEP. Okay, yeah. My husband has a SEP. Yep. Okay, yeah. great. And um, and so we have that going, and then a uh, uh, liquid or in the bank we have uh, one one point six. Nice. So we great want, job, we, Layla. Oh, thank you, thank you. Hard work, hard work. Yeah, yes. well done. Uh, though. Well done. How much is the land? The land is well. They want one point one point one eight on the land but we're going to have to do some work to the house is it, um, there's a house on it, it yeah but it's a little house it, it needs a little work it's a little farmhouse you have know, you run you know, uh, yeah. have you run comps on this how or how or how many acres too it's a uh, 290 something uh, 293 i think 293 293 acres Yes, nice. but it is a gorgeous piece of property. Oh, wow. I, I, I bet. That's a lot of land. Well, I was thinking $1.1 million for I was a say, lot. Yeah. I was like, I was confused. Okay. And and before Rachel breaks the money down, i just really curious. I want to make sure I heard you right. You and your husband want to move to Missouri and live on this, and then eventually your son comes and raises his family on it. Is that what I heard? Um, yes. Yeah. So my, my husband and I, we don't want to move out of Houston. We're going to keep our home here in Houston. Oh, okay. Um, Missouri is going to be, you know, to get away from Houston whenever we want to get away from Houston, live there maybe okay. for a few months in retirement. Gotcha. You know, and then just always come back to Houston. We don't want to give up the home here. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, okay. And so the house needs some renovations. Do you know how much that will cost? Um, you know what? Needs a paint job, bathrooms, rip out the carpet, maybe about 45 50 on the max side i'm saying on the max side okay okay um all right and then your and then your son may come on the property as well right and build his own thing but you guys would just kind of gift that are you expecting him to buy a a partial um within that lot or no, we're my son's seventeen. He's going to be off to college, but after oh, college, oh, okay, gosh, in my head, he was. Yeah, I'm sorry, I got gotcha. you. I'm sorry, that's my fault. I didn't tell you that part, but no. he is a uh, after college. He fell in love with it. He does. He wants to move someplace colder. He doesn't like the heat in Houston. <laughs> fell in love with this property. He loves it. Um, he's always told us this is not a spontaneous thing that you know that he always wanted a piece of. I'm a piece sure of he land does. Where he can drive his can out. Yeah. Yeah. No, just, I think that's great. Okay, but yeah. you guys would buy this property not for the seventeen year old that could meet sweet little Anna here in three oh, years oh, and like move that. out and no, move up no, to Chicago no, no. with her no. family or something like no. yeah regardless of whether the 17 year old likes this property you guys like this property my husband is in love with this property okay, okay. and yes he's in love with it um I mean you you guys are in an incredible financial situation I mean you're you're everyday millionaires is your house in Houston paid off Yes. Okay. So yeah, you got and and how much longer are you guys gonna work? Um, he's probably maybe maybe another seven eight years. Yeah. And what's your house in Houston worth right now if you sold it? Um, maybe about four. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you've got the cash to pay for this land plus the renovations on the small home. Um, yes, we do. But, you know, I'm just thinking about, you know, when we get older, medical expenses, and then if we have to move into a, home, a you know, retirement home, is it really worth, should we just keep the cash and just fund our own old age, or should we buy this piece of property, which is a dream property for us? So you're asking and, not uh, how to buy the property, but if you should buy it or not. Yes. Well, that's... Would it be wise, knowing that, you know, we're going to be elderly and probably the expenses that come with it. I mean, I think it's something to consider, but honestly, we talk about you live like no one else, so later you get to live and give like no one else. So, Layla, I mean, honestly, th- realistically, in 10 years, if you guys hate it and want out, it's only got to go up in value yeah. and sell it and go do your own thing. You're not tied to it forever. Yeah. If you pay cash 
and and you guys need more money than you've invested and you're going to make that money back and then some. So I don't think it's risky at all. Not to mention, I think you told us you already got 800000 in the bank uh, in other investments. So you got your home in Houston that's cash uh, that's worth almost a half a million, maybe in several, you know, in 10 years. So I just think you're sitting pretty and this is not risky at all, Rachel. And you could always flip this property if you get, if you had to have it. Yeah. For... There's no risk that you're taking on here. Yeah. And you guys are still going to be working. Um, Funding retirement, that 800 will keep going up. and yeah, I, I like it. I like the move. I mean, I think it's great. And, and again, it's, it goes back to a, it's a Layla and, your, and, and the, the husband conversation. I mean, I think at that point, from the money side, there's no big red flags. Oh. Um, but, but I want to make sure you want to do this, too. I know he loves the property. Is this what you want to do with, with your money? You know, you guys are speaking to my heart. Yes, I want to, but I have a problem parting with the money i'm a little bit insecure with that and he's he's you know but i i you guys are giving me confidence and saying no you're gonna be yeah secure. i think you're fine it's Go a ahead. lot of money i mean okay. you're writing a 1.1 $1. $1 million dollar check so nothing to sneeze at here so but i get that risky. i would i would want to yeah. throw up a little bit too when you're like oh, okay here it yeah. goes i think you and the but, hubs uh a romantic dinner talk it through maybe a little rod stewart forever young maybe in the background you know this is like this fun young thing is going to keep you guys young as you get older and it's a big adventure that you could afford i i say do it i love it it's great What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices, and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. You are listening to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by my colleague, Rachel Cruz, and we're here for you this hour, taking your money questions, also taking your work questions and relationship questions around these issues of money. 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. It's time for our question of the day, and it's brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. When you need to make repairs, schedule routine maintenance, or find local help for home improvement projects, Neighborly is your source for reliable home service providers in your area. Go to neighborly.com to start your search. And today's question comes from... I see Al. On Smart Money Happy Hour, I said Al one time and it was AI. Is this AI? Is this a joke? Are y'all playing a joke on me? I mean, it says Al. I don't know. I feel like I've missed the entire thing. I, I said Al. I feel like I just tell the story the after the question. Tell the story. Okay. Okay, I'm going to say Al in Silicon Valley. Oh, okay. No, this is y'all. AI in all Silicon pull- Valley. They're pulling something. Okay. They're messing with this you. This says, I'm 23 <laughs> and a recent college graduate. I'm currently working, making 50K a year, graduate without debt, currently have 20 in my savings, 20,000 in my savings, my monthly rent is 700, my car is paid for. My question is, how should I be investing my money at this stage of my life? Um, man, well, Al, AI, if you're even real, uh, this is, this is great. I mean, I would, I would, at this point, you probably, that 20,000, I would say is a fully funded emergency fund for you. So I would take your income and start investing 15% of it into retirement. And if your employer offers a 401k, I would go up to the match, uh, open up a Roth IRA, fund that and yeah, fund 15%. 15% of your income there. Okay, so George and I were on a Smart Money Happy Hour podcast, and we have some notes for all the stuff we do. Yeah, and, and I'm just right. kind of reading it, and I'm like, yeah. And uh, and I said, and it was about counterfeits. I think it's actually out. I think it's the episode that's out today. 
And it talks about how there are companies now that will, it'll go through a system to make sure that it's authentic, right? That the item is, that it's not a counterfeit item. And it said, and it has, and and an owl helps out with this. <laughs> so I say owl helps out right. with this. Well, everyone loses it. Right. And they're like, you're a 60-year-old woman, Rachel. Right. It's AI. It's and I'm AI. like, but it looks like owl. Well, because so in your I defense, know. in your defense, it wasn't like the old school capital where you got a straight line and two crosses That's there. It. So, but it's it was it. just the one line. And you see owl. The uppercase I and the lowercase L look very similar. And there's no periods in between those. So anyways, they in all just defense, made fun of me. In your defense, I and could I'm see how it owl, And I just had like, like. Yeah. PTSD right there, looking at Al in Silicon Valley. Y'all did that to me. Yeah. It was a real question, yeah. but we couldn't resist the opportunity to troll you with the fake names. Yeah. I learned my lesson. Yeah, but Wiser beyond my years. You, no, so you figured it so out. Stupid. Joke is on them. So, there you so, go. So, <laughs> Al, watch out for Al. It's going to take all of our jobs. Al, I know. Like they have Al in the back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get going here to the phones. Hey, we're having fun. I hope you are. Let's go to Mark in Orlando, Florida. Uh, let's see. Here he is. Mark, how can we help? Good afternoon. <clears throat> I was calling just in regards to looking over the numbers my wife and I have in front of us here and wondering if there's any way out except bankruptcy. Oh, no. What's going on? We have um, about $235,000 in debt, uh, about 214000 of that. I'm sorry, about 180000 of that is in judgments and in, um, you know, loans that weren't paid off and a judgment from us, from my company. Uh, we have about $50,000 in car loans, and I had to close the company, and we're looking at, a new salary with a new company I just started with at only about 55,000 a year. Mm. Wow. What what happened with the with the old company with the judgments and everything? We had taken out a few loans uh to try to keep things going over the last year and a half and those loans kept deducting payments uh weekly and then we had uh material that was back ordered and we weren't able to come up with the money after the. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mark. Money had continued to be deducted, so everything just kind of snowballed fell apart quickly. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, okay, do you guys? Um, is your house? What? How much do you guys owe in your house? We owe, that's not. Yeah, that's not even including that. We literally just moved into the house last April. We bought that. We owe about three hundred on that. Three hundred. Okay. Um, any other consumer debt besides the car loans? Uh, no, we don't have any credit cards. We don't have any student loans or anything. We don't own anything, so we just own the vehicles, which is about a truck, which is thirty-four thousand. We still owe on and fifteen thousand on my wife's car. How much okay. are those cars worth? Probably a lot less than that. <clears throat> what were you making, Not or what possibly. were you paying yourself when you when you were working for yourself? What were you paying yourself? Um, it depended on the time of season. I owned an air conditioning business, right? Uh, so it was seasonal, and it was there was never a consistent way to right. figure out what was we're it. Doing. But were you we making were more than fifty five thousand at any point? Oh yeah, yeah. We were bringing home ninety thousand the last two years in yeah. a row. Yeah. The reason I bring this up is um, I want to know what your income potential is. Because as you start to wade through this, the max amount of income possible for both of you is what we're going to need to try to figure out and line mm -hmm. that up. So it allows us to dig out of this or at least consider what would it take to dig out of this without filing bankruptcy. Is your um, wife working at all, Mark? Um, she was doing, you know, stay-at-home mother, but she picked up babysitting uh, now, so making a little bit of cash, but not much. How, how old are Probably your kids? about $1,000 a month. My son is five. My daughter is about to be a year and two. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm. Y'all are in the thick of it for sure. Um, okay. Well, here's, here's looking at everything. I would eliminate Mark as much as possible, like in a, as, as fast as possible, just to get some breathing room. So honestly, even though the car is 34, 
maybe you can sell it for 20 and you'd, you know, you would take a $14,000 loan for the difference. I would do something just to feel like I have a level of control over what's going on because I know you feel like you're spinning out of control with all of this. Um, and so getting rid of the cars, taking a small loan uh, for the difference where you guys are. And then I would be looking at your 180 as as almost like a student loan in my head because like we get numbers like this on the show of so much debt. Usually it's in the form of student loans when we see high um, six-figure debt. But I'm telling you, Mark, I, re- I don't think you're at the brink of bankruptcy. Um, but I do want to make sure that your priorities and what you guys are doing with this new income, because it is significantly less, less um, that it's going to the right things at the right time while you continue to maybe even look for a second job yeah. uh, and yeah. do what you can to up that. Because food, shelter, utilities, and transportation – is our goal. And I know the house, you guys just moved in in April, but I want you to run a budget mark and see if it is, if it is over your mortgage payments, over 25% of your take home pay, I would look at selling and downsizing. Um, I would do some drastic things uh, in order to be able to attack this 180 uh, really, really well. And again, that's going to mean possibly downsizing home, selling cars, And even taking on another job or two just so you can get your head above water because you're scared, Mark. You have a baby and a little one at home and your wife is your sweet wife is yeah doing babysitting to bring in some extra cash. And so um, there has to be some dressing. I don't think you guys are at the point of bankruptcy. I know it feels hopeless, but if you hold in the line, Mark, Austin's going to pick up and we're going to give you Financial Peace University and you and your wife walk through this. You have a road ahead of you, Mark. It's not going to be easy. You have, a, you have years ahead of you of climbing out of this, but I really, I, we avoid bankruptcy at all costs, and I just do not think yeah. you're bankrupt. You feel hopeless, but you're not bankrupt. Yeah, I agree. Mark, you're going to have to work and work and work, and then when you think you can't work anymore, keep working. You have a lot of skill set, and you should be waking, making way more. You have to make more, and it will help, and Rachel's right. Hang on the line, though. We're going to get you some help. Uh, you guys can do this. You, can do you this. just need a community, and you need some steps, and we've got it for you. Hang on. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by my colleague, Rachel Cruz, this hour. The number to jump in for your questions is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Now, Rachel, you're big on the talk uh, and the gram. I mean, you're more a, the gram. More the gram than the talk? The talk is there. It's there? Uh, it's, yeah, and, you and, and I don't actually do it. I know Someone our else team does because I don't. I'm not a big fan of the talk. Me either scares me a little bit. I get it. <laughs> but uh, you are the social but media I'm maven. And I do love... You're the, really good I at social media. I love the gram, though. The gram is so You're fun. really great on the gram. Uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, we're seeing the Instagram. Uh, it's kind of like the Google. You know, you got to check out these things out. And uh, some of these uh, amazing trends now are things like bare minimum Monday. This was made famous by a TikToker who said... She needs uh, half of a day Monday to just get herself ready to work again. <laughs> she had and she too calls much it, of a good weekend. Yeah, to, it takes her to some time. Back. So she calls it bare minimum Monday. She oh, tries no. to do the least amount of possible at work on Monday. And then, of course, you've heard oh, of gosh. the quiet quitting phrase, which yes. is I'm only going to do the bare minimum so I don't get fired. And uh, this is all about just not wanting to work. Like it's, it's, it's people who aren't fulfilled. And instead of getting mad at these people, Rachel, I see is they don't have a reason for going in. Yeah. They fair. don't see something that they uh, enjoy. It's not meaningful to them. And uh, that's why we created a, a really popular tool here called the Get Clear Career Assessment. If you would like to actually enjoy your Mondays and not drink your face off on Friday afternoon because you're so miserable at the work, uh, at the office or, or in your remote job, and you just want to enjoy your work and make money, 
this is the tool for you. It'll help you get a very clear report on how uniquely you are put together, what you do best, what you love to do, and then what motivates you. And this is very helpful. It's a self-awareness tool. It gives you a purpose statement that kind of points you towards a real professional opportunity and you know what you're looking for and thus you can find it. It's called the Get Clear Career Assessment. It's about an 18 minute uh, assessment and uh, it's really going to give you clarity and confidence. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash get clear. RamseySolutions.com slash get clear. And I'll say it's amazing. Thank you very much. It is amazing. Um, let's get now to the phones. Billings, Montana. Do you watch? Do you watch Yellowstone? You know, we... <sighs> you haven't watched it. I can tell. I'm going to say I didn't get fully immersed, but everyone loves it. So. All right. I see Montana and I, I got to talk about it. Yes. And All I right. want to know, Linda, do you live on like a ranch... And are you like a cowgirl? Do you make fun of that show because it's not real? I mean, what's the story, Linda? You know what? I haven't had my TV on for 45 years. Oh, Whoa! Wait a minute. But I did. Re- <laughs> yeah. But uh, I love Montana. I don't live on a, a ranch, but I love it. And um, I, I ran into Kevin Costner. And when I did, uh, he was so nice and he was so humble. And oh! I got his autograph. Yes, Linda. you did, Linda. And it's yes, amazing you, you it's amazing you even knew who he was. I assume you've gone to the movies, just haven't turned the TV on in 45 years. Well, it was one of these things where I had just bought my little, you know, sandwich, and I looked, and I'm like, I know that face. And then it was, oh, oh my <laughs> word. And it was him. It was him. And I said, uh, you know, I love your body of work. And his little kid just looked at me like, that's an idiot. <laughs> That's great, Linda. Great celebrity story. Oh, that's and I'm so, so glad fun. to yeah. know that he was everything we hoped he would be. Yes, I'm so glad to know that's that he was so nice he and kind. Is. Oh, that's nice. Yes, Love it. He was, was humble. So I'm I'm calling to see should I sell his signature on eBay? No. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> make make some extra cash. That's hilarious, Linda. You're a great <laughs> spirit. Oh. Well, this is so fun yeah, to talk to you, you, Linda. How can we help you today? Well, my dear 97-year young friend just went to be with the Lord, and she uh, gave me $20,000, and I am just shocked. And oh, my gosh. Wow. Anyway, we, yeah, we met doing prison ministry together, and back mm. when COVID was going around, and nobody would take her to her doctor's appointments, you know, mm. kind of hung in there and did all. But anyway, it's just, it was a joy. So I don't want to do something stupid, and um, I feel like Lord saying, sit on it for a year. And so what should I do with it? Local bank, uh, a CD. Um, I, yeah. Yeah. Question. No, that's so great. Well, um, a great place to park money short term would, we would always recommend a money market account or even a high yield savings account. Yeah. Um, those are going to be your two best bets. And you can do those um at, at, you know, some local established banks have that option, but also a lot of online ba- banks that aren't brick and mortar that may make you, I don't know how you feel about that. Uh, they're perfectly safe, but sometimes you can get a better rate of return on an online bank at times. So like a bank like Ally, I would look into. That's where my husband and I have our high yield savings account through. Uh, but that or a money market, I think is is a great option for now. And, and um, not that I don't want, I, I want you to, be obedient to what you feel like the Lord is saying for you to do in that with that money for sure. But do you, for you, Linda, in your financial situation, where are you at? Do you have debt? Do you have retirement? I'm, I'm in, yeah, I live in a 1961 mobile home. I have a used car with 371,000 miles on it, a Toyota. Um, I just picked up a side hustle job at a box store. And um, I was a part-time teacher. I'm also an actress. Um, and I just get a little check of about $700 a month, and then it goes up $13, you know, uh, every year. And um, But on the side hustle job, it paid, you know, every two weeks faithfully, and it's about $600. Um, my debt is about $17,119.55. But I just, you know, and I know from taking the classes that I should pay all the debt off, but I I just don't know. Um, big, big ticket items, I need termite, uh, my, the dryer went out, so I'm hanging the clothes up, and a used car eventually, and um, a new bed. So that's kind of, you know, after all the debt's paid off. I did have the emergency fund, and then during um, the whole COVID stuff, uh, and then I retired at 58. I'm 63 now. 
um, I kind of went through, you know, that. So there's a little in the bank. So I'm kind of, you know, starting over. But okay. I spent a lot on missions trips um, and giving to other people and helping them out and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I'm very content, you know, with where I live. But, sure, um, sure. I just, you know, I told her daughters when I just got blown away by this. I feel like she would want it, you know, for the Lord. Um she would send, when I traveled the world a lot in my 30s and 40s, she would uh, give me little missionary tracks from in different languages, Africa mm. and Germany, all over. And I just feel like she would want it, you know, to go for that. But when I drove her by my mobile home once, I said, what do you think, man? And she said, I think it's time for a new house. Oh, oh. <laughs> but, um, well, but, Linda, I, but I'm not really into Linda, all that. Linda, yeah. Linda, you're so sweet. I could talk to you literally. <laughs> Rachel and I could talk to you for hours. You're a delight. But but I'm going to tell you <laughs> something. You. We're gonna, You know what we're going to tell you. This is a gift that yeah. your friend gave you, and you don't need to attach all kinds of things to it. She's in heaven. And, and, and this yeah. was a gift. And I think you ought to, to take care of you. If you were my mom uh, or my friend, mm-hmm. I'd say pay this debt off and, and, and okay. get that debt out of your life. At this age, you don't need to be carrying that debt. You've got your side hustles. Yeah. you got ways of bringing in income. But that debt needs to be gone. And then you can take care a, of the bed. And, and what the a blessing that it's basically almost to the exact dollar amount. I mean, you may have 2500 left, yeah. but but that's, a, that's an yeah. amazing thing, Linda, that's because... Huge. Something is true that releases, I think, not just financially, but emotionally, spiritually, physiology. Yeah. Like when you don't owe anyone anything, when scripture says the borrower mm-hmm. is slave to the lender, there is right. wisdom in that. There is wisdom that yeah. you don't have the ability to be completely free, Linda, that when you make an yeah. income and you and you want to be able to be even more generous than you are, you have to be making these payments to this debt, you know? So when you don't owe anyone anything, there is a freedom and a beautiful legacy, a beautiful legacy uh, that you can leave, that your friend had left you. And I think that Mm -hmm. that is a... That is a a, a wise way to yes. use this to carry her on her legacy on through your story. So yeah. you are wonderful, Linda. I'm so glad that you called in today. And Linda, Rachel's right. I think she's preaching. I think you need to hear the message, the sermon, because here's the deal. You pay that debt off, it frees you up to go on more missions trips, to give to missions. You need that out of your life so that you can give more of who you are. And you are fantastic. Linda, thank you so much for calling. What a gift. Use it. This is The Ramsey Show. You're listening to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined in studio by Rachel Cruz this hour. 888 825 is the number. Our scripture of the day comes from Proverbs 13, 20. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. And our quote of the day, Adam Sandler. Fantastic. Yes. Adam Sandler quote. I mean, I don't think I've ever had a Sandler quote. This is great. It's hard to soar with the eagles <laughs> when you're surrounded by the turkeys. That's my best Adam Sailor. That's all I got. That's back at the guys. I don't know if that's any good or not. Oh, that was really good. That was good, Ken. <laughs> I tried. Uh, and you know what? He's right. Um, he's right. Hard to soar when you're around the turkeys. But hey, we're all turkeys. But we're, but, we're <laughs> but we're all turkeys to a degree. Are we? Yeah, yes. you're right. Yes. You know what? I think you're we right. are. Look at me trying to we act like I got it all, be all together. We all can't be all eagles. <laughs> Not all the time. It's really There's true. There's a humility part to the the life way. that we all have a level of turkey in us. So and you know what? Turkeys that. are also, why are we banging on turkeys? Turkeys are tasty. <laughs> they taste great. You know, they help us take naps. They have the, they're fun to draw when you're a kid. Gobble, 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 gobble. You know, you got the whole nine yards. Folks, I uh, need to probably get my medication. I'm, I'm doing Adam Sandler voices, turkey sounds. What is happening? Seattle, <laughs> Washington is where we go next. We're having fun. Micah is there. Micah, how can we help? 
Hey, um, how are you guys doing? Uh, we're having fun. I just tried to impersonate Adam Sandler. I mean, he can't, we are in a new, we're at a new bad. level, Micah. So yeah. good luck yeah. to uh, you. I don't know what the advice is going to be. We're like. not sure what's about to happen, <laughs> but we're here to help. That's right. If we what's can. Okay, up? great. Yeah, so I want to give you guys a little context here. So I'm 17 years old, and I'm doing running start this year. So I'll only have to do like around three and a half years of college to complete a bachelor's degree. Mm-hmm. And basically, I, I'm trying to decide between going to work at Starbucks and doing their online ASU program where they would pay for my college 100% free. And like working there over the years, I would probably make around like fifty to $60,000 in total. Um, but as a Christian, though, um, I want to go to this private Christian university near my home. And I would probably be able to pay it all off uh, without loans and stuff. So my question kind of is, should I be sort of miserable working at Starbucks and not have as many friends for the years in college, but have a bunch of money to start out with? Or should I enjoy my college college experience, but not really have much money to start out with? Well, I, you know, if, if, you, if you're my son asking me this question, I'm going to go, hey, the fact that you can cash flow college and not go into debt. It's Where are you getting the you money, Micah, for a, for a private Christian university? That's, that has to be expensive. Yeah, so um, it's about – so I have over 50% of the scholarships um, – Oh, okay. Sorry, for the tuition. So it's $16,500 per year about. Um, so it would be like a total of around $57,000. But basically, I've I've been working a little bit. So I have around like $7,000 right now. And also my parents are going to be able to help with okay. that as well. Each That's year. Right. Yeah. It's a no brainer because you really want to do it and you're not going into debt. Um yeah. If, it, if that were not the case, I'd say, yeah, go bust it at Starbucks and get your education paid for. But you really want to do this. So I see no reason why you wouldn't. OK, yeah, that's yeah, that's definitely what I'm wanting to do. Definitely. Right. The well, you didn't need our permission, but I appreciate the question because you're 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 wanting to know. It's if this, good to be. Yeah, you're, you're wanting to know if this is a sound decision. And here's here's what you were worried about. If I do this, Ken, Rachel, I'm going to come out. And I'm not going to have much money, but who cares? You're not in debt. And now you can go work. And as a young guy, you're not going to need a bunch of money. You'll be fine. That's true. That's a good point. All right. So go do it. Go enjoy it. And if you change your mind, here's the thing that I that I want to just say. This is a little soapbox thing. We live in a day and age that if we go to college, because culture has told us, Rachel, that college is the best way to success, that if we go to college and we get in there and we realize this isn't for me, or we go one route with a major, and then we realize, I don't really want to do this. We feel ashamed mm. to just make a change. Yep. And I just want to say, be free. It's your life. That's right. That's right. Here's what anybody says. Make the change. Yes. And by being wise in the decision, which he is, Mike is. Wise. I'm like, you're just, yeah. you're weighing options. You're actually looking at options versus saying, like, this is the only thing I can do. Um, and so it, it is true that the college conversation is getting more interesting I oh, feel like yeah. by the, by the day, oh, because yeah. we are getting so many calls. We did a millionaire theme hour last week with Dave and over half the callers never had a college degree, you know? Right. So it's, uh, um, ask me if I have a college degree. Do you have a college degree? Nope. I thought you did. I thought no. you went. Nope. Nope. Went to Virginia and worked politics. College dropout. Went to work Liberty. on a campaign. You didn't graduate from Liberty. Did not graduate because <gasps> I because I tasted battle, and then I went back to the classroom and was bored out of my mind, and I left. With I don't about, think I knew that. Kid. I got about a semester and a half left, and I'm never gonna do it. So there you go. A semester and a half. Could left. care less. Could care less. Yeah. Let's go to Sean next in Cleveland, Ohio. Here's to all the non-college grads that aren't losers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sean, how can we help? <laughs> Hi, how you doing? We're having fun. What's going on? I uh, just finished Financial Peace University with my wife, and congrats. Every thank you. Every uh, three months that we've been doing it, we've been over budget. And my wife loves Rachel and the way that she explains Aww. things, but she doesn't <laughs> seem to be following them as much as I I'd like to. Um, just wondering how to get. We have a budget, our budget committee meeting tonight. And I want to make sure we're set up to not go over this coming month and try to word that in a way that she understands instead of, you know, me. What, me what, being what me, ends up being the problem, Sean? What's the, what's the over, like how much are you guys over? 
And are you uh, oh, a couple couple grand? A couple <laughs> grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, are we, we just we, ignoring we certain what things? we're making now? And we're we're just she she has that student loan pause, and I want to attack that um, as well as the mortgage. And I guess the student loan thing, I want to wait, like set aside X amount of dollars until they resume it, so we can just write a check and be done. But I think she's thinking, oh, it'll be fine. We have money saved. And I just, we, we can't get on that right. That's well, why are you $2,000 over budget? Because my, our daughters and cheer and competitions that come up, there's uh, all these expenses that go into that. Yeah, there's a, uh, that's a racket. That extra purchases. So. Uh, yeah. Wonder fold wagons come into play and. Oh yeah, you gotta. You, yeah, you got it. I'm like, it's not even summer yet. So once the money starts being spent in summer, it's going to be a lot more. But luckily, we have savings. But I don't want to keep spending savings. No, yeah, yeah, y'all gotta money. get. Yeah, you gotta get and even. I, I don't want you dipping into your savings to fund cheerleading and all that. So, um, tell your wife, love her too, but uh -oh. we have okay. to focus <laughs> on the. We have to. We have to do math and. This isn't like a shameful um, statement, but it's just true. It's fifth grade math. We Our income is this. Our expenses are this. And including giving and saving in that, it needs to equal zero. So we have to make choices, sometimes hard choices, within that income. So if our choice is we want to do competition cheer for the daughter, then other parts of our life are going to have to shrink or in order to, to do that. Or make some money for it. Or, yeah, maybe we make some extra money. Um, but there, there has to be, you, you, you guys can't continue to be in the red because your savings only is going to last you so long. So that's not, it's not a wise plan. So your lifestyles, both of you as a family are above what you make, which is normal in America. That's how people live, but we're not talking about normal. We're being weird here. And so, right. um, there's going to have to be some, some hard yeah, some hard decisions that you guys as a family, and this isn't, Sean, you pointing at her and saying, well, you are doing this and you no, yeah. You need to say to you what, what Sean is thinking. And Sean says, Sean is feeling, I'm kind of getting frustrated. I want to be on the same page. I'm, you know, it, you got to point it back to you. Don't point the finger. Yeah. But tell her, love her. Love her, love her but, but we maybe have we need to get cheer. the budget. I think we need a cheer. Give me an S. Give me an I. Give me a D. Give me an E. Give me an H, give me a U, give me an S, give me a T, give me an L, give me an E. What does that spell? Side, Side hustle. hustle! Go pay for the cheerleading, mama, if you want it in the budget. Whoa, watch out. Rachel Cruz, great Sean, hour. Thank you, James Childs and the team. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Rachel Cruz. If you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, Go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.